I just want to know where everybody says everybody's doing it. Mm. Who's everybody? So when I you coached, I think that's I think that's bullshit. I've been Jimmy, when you pro, coached. Okay, I've, so been in, I've been in a pro game a very very long time. I've got a lot of friends in the pro game that are coaching, and not everybody is doing it. It's an easy way I would say, oh yeah, everybody's doing it, so it's okay. No, not everybody's fucking doing this. I mean, that's gotta that's gotta stop. That's gotta stop. So, so right. Jimmy, when you coach, you never once had a um, an underling sneak into a stadium to watch a training session. For what? I don't know. I'm just asking a question. It just doesn't make sense. If you're confident so you in your didn't. own abilities, then what what are you what are you spying on on a Friday? I said this it, before. You have a roster, okay, that you have to declare at the beginning of the season. Every team does. You have all the tools in the world to scout opposition. What are you going to get out of it? Maybe set plays, whatever it is, but unless they're going to get a brand new squad for that game that you're going to play on a Saturday, what is the point? Not everybody does it. So I don't know why they keep saying, yeah, everybody, everybody cheats. Everybody's flying drones. Who's flying drones? Like it's, okay. it's crazy. Jimmy, is it, and I don't want to be harsh here, but, but is the fact that you would never cheat or spy on the opponents, maybe part of the reason why you're no longer coaching. Are you being a dick right now? Or? <laughs> no, 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 no. Yes, it's, but it's also no, playing devil's no, advocate. A, yeah, I'm playing devil's it's, advocate it's, mainly. It's here. dick devil's advocate. <laughs> yeah. It's so dick. let me let me ask. Yeah, let me ask you this, Charms. Right? Do you think that's like in your interview process? Do you spy on the opposition on a Friday? I wonder. I don't or know. Are you just kind of ridiculous right now? No, I I don't know. It could be. Are you willing to, if you're like um an intern working for a big name manager who likes to, to spy and they said, listen, we might ask you at times to, to don a dope, don a, don a, don a, do, don a GoPro Do I know? And, and, and pretend to be a cleaner in a stadium. And, and would you be open to that? I imagine that might be occasionally brought up, would it not? It has been brought up, you know, within the context of an intern or a lower ranked employee at a club. We, we've heard that already. Are you talking about the manager being hired or a manager hiring individuals to come in and do it? Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Or being offered to have somebody to do it for him or her. It'll be good for your career if you... It's hard to say no to some managers, put it that way, right? If you're a lower ranked employee. If you're a young guy trying to make a name for himself or trying to climb the ladder in football. No, no, let's big go back to the original, the original question that you asked me. You're saying mm. maybe I'm not involved anymore because I, I didn't, I wasn't cheating. Maybe you should have cheated. Is my point. <laughs> in fairness, you, <laughs> in, 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 with this idiot. Right no, now. but in, in fairness, though, you got Honestly. results that last year. You actually got <laughs> results by not cheating, right? I'm just, I'm playing devil's advocate here, right? I mean, right. Yeah, what I like, but it's not. Jimmy, it's, it's silly. It's silly talk. You don't listen. If you're getting in, in the hiring process for a manager, they don't ask, "Do you cheat? Mm -hmm. Do you fly drones? Do you do this? We do, do whatever it takes to win." What about that one? Yeah, because no, that's in, how in, it's rationalized, right? If you're going to play in, devil's in the, advocate, in the right way. Hmm. Like you will work, you know, your twenty-hour days, but you won't cheat. I mean, listen, I, I find it interesting because you say, you know, it doesn't happen, and I, I'll believe you. you. You've been in the game for, for you know, your whole life. I believe you, but then other people like Tyler Adams, who've also been there, maybe the clubs they've been at happen to be clubs where it is commonplace, right? Tyler Adams, the player. Yeah, yeah, because that's what he, he oh, goes. It happens Tyler all the time. Tyler Adams is cheating, is he? Well, he said he said it happens all the time. Where in football? Yeah, I guess it depends on the club you've been in, right? When I was at my clubs, I never heard about drones flying or individuals doing all this spying. Never heard about it. When I was coaching at TFC, never heard about it. When I was at York, we never cheated. So not everybody is doing it. It's a bit like the argument, is there a God? And, and asking an atheist, well, prove it. Well, I, I can't prove it because it's not there, right? You can't prove it because it's not there in your mind, right? Whereas the Tyler Adams, for example, okay, fair enough, prove it. You're saying it's there. You're saying there is a God. You prove it. That's what it is. It's the same argument as, is there a God? Cheating in football. Finally, religion and football. Have look, I'm saying, look, but yeah, look, people people do cheat, but not everybody does it. 
Right. So that's where I'm saying that's got to stop that everybody's doing it. Yeah, you know it, happens. Stop? It, it happens. Some people get caught. Other people don't. They still do it. They cheat. It's cheating and everything. But I'm saying not everybody does it. You know what's going to stop? Um, I think this conversation about cheating until the next big bombshell drops. Don't yeah. you agree? We kind of, I think, and, and and it was good for this podcast, the first 10 minutes or so. It was good for me and Wonga on, on Monday because we had nothing else to talk about. Um, so <laughs> it, it, it's time to move on. I think until we we get that 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 investigation is dropped, you know, and we get the the true details and see what happens. But can I add we, one more thing to it, okay, just to weigh yes. in with my two cents? Is that I know people in the game. Jimmy's one of them. I know others who are who are coaches in the international game and a club game, and and they say both. Like they're on the spectrum. Like they're on one end. Like Jimmy's saying they're adamant in saying it does not happen. I've never done it. And then also people who have either. Um, participated in it or seen it being done um, in the game um, and then maybe have d disagreed with it, but it's, it, they know it happens. So I think the, how hard FIFA came down on Canada might curb the use of drones and spying, but I think cheating and spying on the opponent as a practice, I think will continue to be part of the game, unfortunately, because as Bobby was saying yesterday, the margins are so fine. So people are looking to get a leg up on the opponent in any way that they can. And so I think this will continue to be a practice in some way, shape, or form. I love whether it's cheating, you know, from spying or cheating on the pitch with diving, embellishing. I love when people start using the frame, it's gamesmanship. <laughs> it's such bullshit. Or it's, it's, just part of, it's just part of the dark arts, right? Yeah, part of the dark arts, yeah. Where, where we come from, it's just normal. Let's just make it right. Well, can I throw yeah. something in here? Sorry, JC here, first time caller. Um, in the world of podcast editing, which is where I belong, um, there's a, there's a real like underbelly of steroid use. So there's, and when we get together, all of us stare uh, as editors of podcasts, specifically footy podcast editors. Um, it's just rampant. There's just big needles going around, just jamming people in the butt. Mm. And it's like, well, we'll get a leg up. You know, we're going to edit the best show ever, but we need to do it while we're on the steroids. Personally, I, it's been tempting. But I have not done it. So I will say that as the editor of Footy Prime, the podcast, I have not devolved, like delved into uh, the steroid game, which, again, is very rampant among uh, footy podcast editing in the editing community. So, you know, it's, it, it's I'm with Jimmy. Like it's not everybody does it. Uh, not everybody. Well, some a lot of people do it, but not everybody. Does, I don't do it. Um, ketamine. Um, <laughs> meth oh, for sure. But You're right. Sure. Just saying, but but Open as mind. far as this, yeah. Just, <laughs> just so integrity. everyone knows, this is a, this is a bit. This is, a bit. <laughs> just so everybody is, it, is it though? <laughs> hey, integrity. Uh, you have integrity. There's a, there's some really good comments about <laughs> yesterday's pod with uh, Bobby Smirniotis coming on, and the man in the ring says, after all the success Smirniotis has had in football both abroad and in Canada, starting from the grassroots level. I would be honored if he would come to Toronto FC. It would be incredible to see the type of team he could pull together on a $27 million bu budget rather than a $2.7 million. Yet I don't think he would come for some big salary and lofty ambitions, and that's the beautiful part. He's genuinely invested into this team 100%, and you're going to have to fire him to get him to let go of this of his goal. That's a mark of a great coach. Oh, I, I, Jimmy, I want to hear you, your take on this. I think a CPL coach would jump at the opportunity to go to an MLS team. I think Bobby, actually, I, I know Bobby was one of the final interviews for the TFC job. Yeah. They considered him very, very highly. Yeah, and, he's, been linked, he's been linked with TFC. He was linked with Montreal, mm -hmm. with the national team. Um, and I think Bobby, Bobby's ambitious. He wants to move on. He wants to test himself. And I think if he's given that opportunity at that next level, I think he would take it. And I think he's ready. Uh, he's got Champions Cup experience now. He's won won the domestic title. Um, for me, I think Bobby's Bobby's next move will come relatively soon if given the opportunity. But he needs it, and he deserves it. Do you think uh, Dubs, a, a team south of the border, would consider him? Absolutely, I think so. it's impossible to ignore his track record of success, right? Yeah. You do it in a domestic league. I think you would you would look at Bobby and his success at Ford the same way you would look at a a really prolific USL coach, mm. right? Or somebody in the in the college system uh, to a lesser degree. 
but I think absolutely he would be a strong candidate anywhere in MLS. Yeah, and uh, listen, there's no opening right now at TFC, just to clear that up. And and you know, John Herbman in the perfect world stays there for a very long time. That's what they would like because they hired him at great expense. Uh, so we'll see what happens in the coming weeks and months. Uh, but yeah, Bobby's very much highly rated amongst obviously the Canadian professional football world. And I'm sure, like you said, they're dubs in the, in the South as well. Any more comments there, Wong, or do you want to move on? Uh, I don't know. What do you want to do, Sharms? I can keep going here. Go keep going. Why not? Okay. I'm still waiting for this Champions League draw to come down. Well, there was, uh, I don't want to keep going. It, people are saying that you, you're you minimizing the cheating, Sharms, because of your, because you're a Brit. And uh, I don't agree with that. I just think that <laughs> well, that's xenophobic. I, I think I think it is, and I think it's just because you're not minimizing are, um, at all. I think it's down, not because he's yeah. a Brit. He's he has loose morals. I think it's more that <laughs> <laughs> loose lips. I don't yeah. want to keep going on the cheating one, but it's got uh, like close to fifty uh, comments, so I'm going to stay away from it. But it's it's quite interesting what people have to say. I'm not minimizing um, it. I'm just saying there's worse things in the world than flying a drone, right? All I said was flying a drone and dropping bombs on innocent people is worse than flying a drone and, and taking pictures of a training session. And these mm. people will be found guilty, as Beth Priestman was, and we punished, but let's not be stupid and ban these people for life. Okay, There's worse things. It's not great. It's morally corrupt. I get it. You should be punished. Okay, But people are going a little bit too far. They should be well, literally they're... hung, drawn, and quartered. That's what people are saying, literally. And dragged around the city behind a cart horse with their entrails bleeding from upon their 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 torso. That's what people want from people who who cheated. Now that's Despite British. That is British. <laughs> right. What the fuck are you talking about? Right now? Right. Did you what reason? are you on about? With this stuff, my God. It's like so um, down people. Yesterday, yesterday, uh yesterday's pod at around twenty six minutes in. Uh, Bobby admitted that John Herdman and he did not shake hands. And I'm wondering, people are saying this is a big deal. That it, one is this fall from grace is becoming increasingly difficult to deny. And that was about John Herdman's approach. But I'm wondering from Jimmy, Jimmy, sorry to put you on the spot, is going to shake hands with the opposite coach, the normal, traditional uh, post game, that's or... Do people always just run off and it's different all the time? No, it's you go over and shake the other manager's hands, just a respect for one another, respect for the game. It's it's what you do. Normally before the game, you walk over to the opposition, wish them well. Then you go back in. Obviously, the game starts. Everybody's heated. There's emotions are flying. Um, whether you win or you lose, because you don't win them all, you've got to take defeat as well. And you got to be humble about it. And you walk over and you give a handshake and say, well done. And then off you go. It's just a respect for one another in the game. It's interesting too, because if I won and I'm the coach, I'd lo- I'd gladly go shake hands with of the course you would. coach. But then you have to. Ex- <laughs> but then that's that's the thing, Wanger, is that you you have to accept defeat as well at the same time. Uh, absolutely, and you have still have to walk over after getting defeated and shake the opposition manager's hand. So I'll after hearing, yeah, well, after hearing Bobby, what does Sharms and I before this podcast started? saying you know is is john herdman under such scrutiny right now that this how is he playing this out in the media because he's in control of that and he's in control of that narrative i don't i'm not sure this is the narrative if i were john herdman's uh you know media coach this is the approach i'd be taking it it would be hey i'm always going to be He's, he's talking front and center for TFC, uh, talking how great Osorio was. He's always being quoted and not shaking hand, even though it's not a quote, it's an action that will be have reverberations and consequences. Look, it's we're making a big deal out of it, right? There's Are we? Nothing that, there's nothing that states that you have to go do this. It's not mandatory. Oh, okay. it's, just what, it's just what coaches do. Right. And if you don't do it, okay, fuck, whatever. You know, sometimes well, you look that's... at it and, and you look at it and you go, okay, that's a little bit disrespectful of your manager and you, you walk off down the tunnel. But most times you'll see majority of managers at the end of a match, regardless of what happens, they go shake hands. 
And it's hard to really comment without knowing the, the details. Who knows? Maybe, yeah, maybe, you don't. Maybe you don't, don't have have well, that's what I wanted to know. I wanted to know <laughs> what know. the tra tradition of it all was because it's traditional in other sports. Some other sports, they don't do it in hockey. Hockey, you run off the ice unless it's a playoff game. And usually it's actually the last game of a playoff series, right? They'll shake hands. Yeah. But otherwise, you just leave the ice. In basketball, you don't shake hands after. Um, and maybe that's because of the the amount of mat games and matches there are. But in certain sports, I know. No, well, the, in the other thing is wrong. You got to think as well. When in our game, we we all go down the same tunnel. Mm. In other sports, you go to different areas, don't you? Most of the time, yes. It's a good point, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. I, th I found uh, grabbing a man's beard even more disrespectful than that. When we saw Lorenzo <laughs> Insigne <laughs> grab. Better bangers, uh, beard. I mean, I it, actually, how, how I, does I laughed at that? I laughed at that. I laughed at it too. But, Is that gamesmanship, I mean... Jimmy? <laughs> that stuff, <laughs> listen, that happens all the time. Just annoying people waiting. <laughs> you're just <laughs> trying to get a react, you're trying to get a reaction on set plays. You're giving someone a little pinch, you're pulling their armpit hairs, you're just trying to get under people's skin. <laughs> There's that something overt about time. it, though. Like the fact that he reached out and like tugged on his beard, right? Yeah. Like it reminded me like when I was a kid, if my brother just wanted to put me over the top, he would like obviously have a longer reach than me. And if my dad was in between us and I was trying to get after my brother, he would reach over and I would, wouldn't be able to touch him because his arm was longer and he would just tap me underneath the chin. And I would, <laughs> I would like fly off the handle. Well, like like see, Oh, just, yeah. just like a little tap. So I can imagine Batty Banga, right? Like just feeling like like steam coming out of his ears, right? Yeah, because you know you, you can't do much. You can't like turn around and sock him in his face. So yeah, it's like so when you go into the, the game, go, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like when you go into the box and on a set play, and you walk by the the man that's or the woman that's marking you, and you step on their foot. Oh, right on the instep. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, and or probably back also up, pretend that you stumble and just like yeah. dig your heel into the top of their foot. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. <laughs> I, I was thinking also better bang is on what a uh, hundred grand and insignia's on 15 million a year. It mm -hmm. does. I think that it has a little bit of part of it too. plays a little part, right? But not in that moment. It yeah. I think for better banga, maybe not for insignia, but for better not, banga, he's like, hmm? does it not like the, how much these guys are, are making once that whistle is blown on the different pitch, tiers, it means absolutely the, nothing. Yeah. Once, yeah, it no, I don't think. Wait, you're saying it does mean something, or it I'll ask you like, like it, it doesn't like when you're on nope. the pitch, and it doesn't matter that he's making 15 or making 100, it, it doesn't matter. You're not, not like, you in know that, what, this guy's under my skin right now, not in that moment when he grabs his beard and like it's those two guys mm. standing kind of mm. toe to toe. But if I'm Batty Banga, I'm probably saying something like I'm I'm intensely aware of who's standing in front of me, and I'm probably wielding it against Insigne. To be like this, you're on this much money and you're resorting to pulling my beard, right? Like right. I'm, I'm trying to sort of leverage it that way, in a sense. Maybe or you're, saying, just, Jimmy, or you're looking at Insignia saying, how much did they pay you? Because you stink. <laughs> That's yeah. what I was going to suggest. And the, be and the best you can do is to give my beer a tug. <laughs> this, is, yeah. this is your yeah. highlight so far? Was that you before or after his goal? <laughs> you scored a goal that you should score. But yeah. apart from that, you've been pretty invisible against the CPL team. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sure he's getting a lot of stick throughout the league as well. Players running by him, saying things just oh, to wind yeah. him up and get him going. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, but you're used he likes to, to that incite, point. doesn't he? He likes to incite those Insigne. He really yeah. does. He's mm -hmm. not the most popular fella, even amongst the fan base, until they start winning. But I think uh, on the other side, Bernadeschi has that ability still to win the fan. I think he's got the fans in his corner, Bernadeschi, because he puts the effort in every game. He's pretty healthy. He, you know, he puts a shift in, makes lots of money, sure, but it seems to me that the fan base have uh, an affinity with Bernadeschi that they just don't have with Insigne. And until the yeah. team starts contending, it ain't going to happen. It's uh, it's disappointing. Still no Champions League draw, by the way. Still looking hey, here. We, yeah. we moved off the handshake thing. I think Jimmy's mm. point about the team sharing the tunnel is is a good one. Um, and Wonger, you're asking Jimmy about whether or not like that's a that's a ritual that's commonplace in the game. And there's a reason why the cameras go down at a prim, uh, premiership game or like any other game at, at post game. And they're focused on the managers 
because they know that there's going to be um, a handshake and they're looking to see if there's something untoward that's going to happen. Is everything going to happen the way that it should? But I mean, yes, they're not mandated to do it, but you're also not mandated to hold the door for somebody as you're as you're coming out of the the metro system or the grocery store. But you do it anyway because it's the right thing to do and it's the decent thing to do. Well, so I think. Yeah, it is. <laughs> no, but, no, but Wonga doesn't do that, though. He, <laughs> he, he slams doors and opens places. No one's places. more important than I am at the moment I'm walking into the door. <laughs> so, it, like, it, in, a, in a game where there's all these dark arts and, you know, the whistle blows and all this shit doesn't matter. But post-game, th there's meant to be a little bit of, of decency and respect that's still part of the game. And the handshake is absolutely part of that. So whether you're on the winning side or the losing side, I think it's a really important part of the game that has that has to be maintained. So if he's if if uh, Herdman's under the microscope for it, and and I think you need to be held to a standard, and that should be part of it. Are you going to go see the fans? Go do it after you hand you you shake the hand of the opposing team's manager.